Hello, this is Dr. Harriet Fraud on Capitalism Hits Home, an interpersonal update. This is a show about the intersection of capitalism, class, and our personal lives. A second kind of man enters this changed terrain of male-female relationships with no help at all, because men don't have the kind of support and help that women had for our changed roles, along with the women's movement and all the things that came along with it, consciousness-raising sessions, support of other women, publicity about the importance of what we do and who we are. And that second kind of man is insecure and frightened. He demands that his partner, do all the traditional labor, child care, housework, emotional care of him, sexual care of him on demand, connecting him with friends and relatives, cooking, cleaning, housework, while she's also working outside of the home. Those are the kind of Trump supporters that you see the MAGA Make America Great Again, is make really make America the kind of great, which was a white country where men got family wages. However, they don't want to blame the capitalists who abandoned them for machines, computers, overseas cheaper workers. They want to blame uppity women and minorities and refugees for their problems. There was a very interesting map made by, I think it was Mother Jones magazine, where they show that the areas of masculine insecurity in the United States are exactly those of Trump supporters. And you can see that in the demands of people like Rush Limbaugh and the kind of language of Donald Trump where he talks about how his second divorce from Marla Maples was perhaps precipitated by the fact that she actually wanted him to be seen wheeling a stroller in Central Park. She wanted him to get engaged with his daughter, which he found an assault on his masculinity. Those relationships in which men are demanding all the things that they used to get when women were full-time servants for them in the home, while women have to go out to work, those relationships last even less time than relationships of different kinds of people who try for something else. That's why the red states have a much higher divorce rate than the blue states. You can look at that these new developments in, in men with two different groups. There are the men's rights groups that feel that even if they're divorced, they should have access to their children when they want, they shouldn't have any obligations to their wives, and they should be catered to. Those are very different from the father's rights groups, which are rights for divorced fathers to be able to see their children more, to be able to connect with their children, to be able to care for their children, rather than have rights because they're men and do what they feel like. Those people who do marry and stay married tend to be people with college degrees and more money. They're college-educated and wealthy. If they marry at all, they marry later when they have their education completed and good jobs. Most who stay married can talk through their conflicts and share responsibilities. The wealthy who stay married long and who are the only group that's having more children rather than less, they hire other poorer men and women to do their cooking, their cleaning, and their child care. Their maids or nannies take the children to after-school sports, lessons, or enrichment programs. They're the ones who can take their family out to dinner or buy takeout food. 
or get the maid to cook and clean up afterwards. They have party planners to do their children's parties and caterers to manage their entertaining. They also can afford psychotherapy to help them with the conflicts in their marriages and in their lives, which are in part the conflicts of trying to adjust to a changed terrain of relationships. They can afford marital stability, and they can afford children, because they pay others to do the work that stay-at-home moms once did, or in the case of the 1%, they can pay their women to stay home and manage the various help they hire to take care of their houses and their children. Now the mass of Americans are struggling politically over what are the conditions of existence that would allow new egalitarian families or that insist on reinforcing the old conditions which no longer work. They're economically impossible as the traditional family form based on women being home serving men and men working at a family wage. They're also impossible because the family wages aren't there. Those are the struggles we see around abortion, which is only available in 39 counties now because the evangelicals and right wing want to take away women's right to choose and also families' right to choose whether to have children or not because an egalitarian family depends on deciding together whether you want a child and can afford to sustain a child. They're also fighting for things, these are the fights we see, over things like family leave, leave to take care of a sick child, leave to take care of an older relative. Because women aren't home all the time, able to do those things anymore. And so that those people who fight against that, which are often located in the evangelical South and are, are the right wing, are trying to reinforce the conditions of a family form that's impossible for the mass of people. That same family form that they're trying to reinforce was formerly seen in the late era of Nazi Germany, where they defined women's spheres as Kirche, Kuche, and Kinder, kitchen, church, and children. But at the same time, they needed women to work in the factories to replace the men who were drafted. So they compelled women to work in order to survive, but defined them as naturally working in the home so they didn't have to pay them very much. That way they got women's domestic labor and also their employment. Ironically, in Nazi Germany, where they required those things of women, they wanted women to reproduce at the same time because they needed to rekindle the force that would go out and die for Germany or for Nazism, fascism. But women didn't give birth any more than they had before because they were so wiped out after 60 hours in the munitions factory and then childcare and household care as well. The kind of struggles we see are struggles over enhancing and allowing new family forms or trying to hold on to sex roles that the economy doesn't allow anymore. Now, what happens is Americans are trapped with evangelical religions that at the same time say that they are family-focused. In fact, focus on family is one of the richest of those right-wing um, institutions. But at the same time, fights against any possibility for families to survive and thrive without the supports we need. 
and those are the supports they fight against in order to enhance the profits of the wealthy people who finance them. Now, America is particularly backward in this respect, and the sugar arrangements industry is an all-American industry. Most of the sugar babies and sugar daddies in the world are in the United States. There are fewer of them in the other developed nations that allow the conditions of existence for egalitarian families. For example, free college and university tuitions. France, Germany, Scandinavians, even Slovenia has that. Free quality health care so that when people have children, they don't have the burden of the children's health or buying health insurance, which is very expensive. Free or subsidized quality child care, heavily subsidized. For example, in France, infant care is a dollar an hour on a drop-in basis. All three-year-olds are enrolled in fine public child care centers that have a pediatric nurse there, and they also have a master's degree teacher and an associate's degree assistant teacher, and they have sick rooms where working parents can leave sick kids in the care of a nurse. Their after-school programs are subsidized. Their summer programs are subsidized, so they can't cost more than 15% of a month's salary for the workers that are having their children in these places, these summer camps or after-school programs. They have generous maternity and paternity leaves. The EU nations compel maternity and paternity leaves. They give anywhere from four weeks to 52 weeks a year of fully paid maternity leaves, and the state repays the business that gives a maternity leave that's paid so that the businesses are not opposed. And they give from two weeks to 13 weeks of paternity leave. And many of the European nations, in addition, make paternity leave compulsory so men won't get any job promotions or advantages for not taking their paternity leaves. They also have highly subsidized unemployment benefits and guaranteed family vacation time. Every French person who is working and employed gets five weeks of paid vacation which allows families to have time together. They also have family leaves for, for people who are ill, for elders who need their company, for whatever. They have subsidy for single mothers, subsidy for school clothes, subsidy for um, family members that need company. We in the United States are one of the four nations in the entire world that doesn't have paid maternity leave, guaranteed. We're right there with Swaziland, Lesotho, and Papua New Guinea, the only other nations in the world without paid maternity leaves. Why? Why are we pre allowing our economy and our government to provide a precarious future for the mass of Americans and provide very little support for relationships or children. Dating has shifted from a pattern of finding a suitable mate, marrying and having children, to dating in a hookup culture or having a series of monogamous relationships that don't last and that can't last in our culture. Part of the reason that many sugar babies give for going into the sugar industry in addition to paying off debt 
is that they don't want to get involved romantically with a man because it may hold back the careers that they need. They understand that relationships may end and they don't want to be left as older women without finishing their degrees and being secure in their careers. Also, they need money. And therefore, the men who really fear the whole changed terrain of relationships want a GFE, a girlfriend experience, without having to deal with the problems that a girlfriend provides. The kind of adjustment, the kind of honesty, the kind of talking, the kind of changes that relationships need these days. There's an extra irony here. Women's sexuality, which can reduce us to our sexuality so people don't notice that we're people, and cause us to be sexually abused and harassed, as well as devalued at work, also makes it easier for us to have a debt-free, or at least more debt-free future, as sugar babies and sugar arrangements which is one of the reasons they're so very appealing in our predatory capitalism, in which the conditions of relationships have changed without the social supports they need. For example, in Sweden, one of the things they've done to adjust to this is the new housing has small housing units in which young people can live, but big communal kitchens and game rooms so people who come home from a long day can relate to other people in a provided environment that's subsidized. They do the same for the elderly, and they do that for two reasons for the elderly. Partly, it's because it's much more healthy. Everyone needs connection, and the elderly are otherwise hold up in their individual homes without co much contact with other people, but they also do it to keep their medical prices down because they almost all have subsidized or free medical care. And when people can connect with, all, with other people, their Medicare needs, their medical needs go way down. And similarly, in their older people's housing, which is subsidized, they have smaller apartments and big communal spaces, communal dining areas, game rooms, rooms where people can see films and be together. But in America, everything is commoditized. It's monetized. Look at our president who, when he became president of the United States, doubled the prices at his Mar-a-Lago Florida resort and then had foreign guests go there so that the government can pay double and he can line his pockets. He also enhanced the hotel near Washington so far that he owns and raised the prices so international guests can come and subsidize him financially in order to look better to the president. He once said, if I can't make money off of this presidency, it'll be a waste of time. So the sugar industry is a phenomenon of America's current sexist vulture capitalism with its grotesque prices for education and heavy debt burdens Born by our future workforce. Colleges, presidents, no longer have anything to do with education. They become presidents to raise money, but the colleges, too, become capitalistic units selling degrees in order to survive. And they do that because in order to enhance their political position, political Leaders have cut taxes on education, something the West Virginia teachers who struck pointed out, 
so they can look better, meanwhile starving the country of education and forcing the expenses onto individuals. And so that universities have become crazily expensive. And of course, not all sugar babies are involved with universities, but many are at least 45% of sugar babies are involved in education and paying off in de educational debt. Relationships are included in the commoditization of everything. Transactional, looking at what you can get and what you have to give, rather than looking at connection and caring and concern and the togetherness of building a future. Critics shout out that Marxism and leftism destroys the sanctity of the family. An ironic statement. Look at the sugar industry, driven by vulture capitalism's denial of funds for education, while spurring profiteering on college loans and sometimes profiteering on college itself, as in the for-profit colleges in which Betty DeVos, our education cabinet minister, invests, and which she has spurred, she has subsidized and extolled. Look, in order to look at what happened, let's look at the capitalistic destruction of the family in the combination of replacing well-paid jobs with underpaid jobs overseas, replacing people with machines that cost less and enhance the profits. That, those are the things that forced women's mass migration white women's, and the majority of the country was white in the 70s. They pushed women into the workforce to try to make a living for the family, and at the same time totally disrupted the family without providing the supports that would have allowed a family. And those supports are the kind of things that other European countries, with a much stronger communist and socialist presence, have fought for like paid family leave, free education from early infant education through the university, free health care, free child care, free after school care, subsidy for single mothers, and so on. Our capitalist society has denied us that. And the vast monies that our capitalist earned by taking our jobs overseas, or mechanizing, robotizing, and computerizing them, have been brought home to the United States, that money, and used to buy our media, and used to buy our politicians. And it's only now that people are beginning to catch on what people like Ocasio-Cortez are calling for a 70% tax rate on incomes above a million dollars, lower than the 96.4% tax rate on the rich that FDR suggested, but a lot bigger than the tax rate we have now, which for people like Trump is zero. Because people can always put their money in the Canary Islands and the United States versus the Canary Islands is a joke. The Canary Islands would tell us the names and give the money back. They've bought our government. The good news is that we now no longer believe that it's Marxism or leftism that destroys families because we watch how capitalism destroys American families. We see the transformation that has happened in relationships, in families. We see the transference from a relationship of connection and future and partnership 
the, the kind of transactional relationships that one has in a sugar baby deal. And we see the excesses of American capitalism that are busily destroying the relationships of trust without money, of caring, of trying to work out a love that lasts, and of family in order to create a monetized and transactional emotional, sexual, personal, and business environment. So that the idea that Marxism destroys family in the light of the sugar industry is ludicrous. It also points to the fact that what we need is we need a program on families where families are subsidized, where people can work, have children if they want them, and be supported in their lives with the government's input. Thank you for listening. This episode has been brought to you by Democracy at Work. Please support our work. Visit our website at democracyatwork.info.